Hi there, welcome to this alchemist chemistry video looking at the family of molecules known as the esters. Okay, so esters are another example of a homologous series. That means that they are a family or series of organic molecules that have very specific similarities. They will have the same general formula. They will have similar chemical properties based on the fact that they contain the same functional group. And I'll expand on the functional group in a second. They will have a graduated trend in their physical properties, i.e. their boiling points will increase as their chain length increases due to the increasing number of intermolecular forces they can form along their chain length. And finally, each successive member of the family will increase in size by CH2. So I said previously that esters contain the same functional group. A functional group is either an atom or group of atoms within a molecule that give that particular molecule its specific chemical properties. The functional group found within the esters is known as the ester group, or sometimes the ester linkage, as it's linking two alkyl chains together via the functional group, and it is comprised of a carbon atom, doubly bonded to an oxygen atom, and also singly bonded to a second oxygen atom found centrally in the middle of the alkyl chains, and not terminally at the end of an alkyl carbon continuous chain. And it would look a bit like this monomer representation here. So it's a carbon with a double covenant bond to an oxygen atom, a single covenant bond to a second oxygen atom, and these two covenant bonds leading off to the left and right represent the rest of the alkyl chain, which would run off in this direction and in this direction as well. So you'd find this ester group or ester linkage in the middle of the molecule, not at the end of the molecule. That's quite an important fact for later. I'm now going to talk about some of the uses of these ester molecules, and their uses can be related back to some of their physical properties. So small molecular mass esters, i.e. small members of the family, are quite volatile. That means they evaporate relatively easily. And that's because they form weaker strength relative intermolecular forces when compared against similar sized carboxylic acid molecules. They don't form the hydrogen bonds that carboxylic acid molecules are able to form between their molecules. So ester molecules can be evaporated more easily because when we apply heat energy, it um, will overcome the weak intermolecular forces between the small ester molecules, relatively small ester molecules, causing them to move apart and therefore to vaporize. Once the esters have vaporized, they elicit some very useful properties. The first thing you'll notice about esters when you smell them is that they are sweet smelling. This makes them perfect for use in perfumes and fragrances. So the esters are sweet smelling molecules which can be used in fragrances. The second main use of the esters is that they can also be used to produce sweet flavorings in confectionery and sweets. So they are really, really useful for the food and also for the cosmetic industry. I'd like to now take you through an example of an esterification reaction. And I'm gonna use methanol, a toxic small alcohol, and ethanoic acid, a slightly larger, perfectly safe in low concentration, carboxylic acid, and react those two together in an esterification reaction to form an ester. If you look at the reactants in this esterification, you'll see that I've drawn the ethanoic acid as a full displayed formula, and next to it, the methanol also in its full displayed formula. And I've also tried to turn the methanol around so that the functional group OH is pointing towards the carboxylic acid. I've done that on purpose to help illustrate how this esterification reaction will proceed. Under specific conditions, those being a concentrated sulfuric acid catalyst and warm environmental conditions of 60 to 70 degrees centigrade, warm enough to overcome the required activation energy but not boil and evaporate the alcohol being used. What happens is the OH group from the ethanoic acid is lost and a hydrogen atom from the OH group of the methanol is also lost. And then the remaining part of the ethanoic acid bonds directly to the oxygen of the methanol to form our new molecule known as an ester. And you can see the ester linkage as formed here. There's the C double bond O of the carboxylic acid. And then in blue, that's my bond 
to the oxygen of what was originally the methanol. And what is removed, what is lost, is water, and that's the OH from the carboxylic acid joined onto the hydrogen from the methanol to make that water. So a small molecule is eliminated, that being water, formed from these atoms being lost from the two molecules here, and then the remaining parts of the ethanoic acid join directly onto the remaining parts of the methanol at that CO point to create our ester linkage in the new ester. This type of reaction is known as a condensation reaction because it involves the elimination of a small molecule, in this case water. Now that was a very simplified explanation for GCC level, which in no way talks about the actual mechanism of this reaction, which is more complicated. This is just a simple way of looking at esterification to help us understand how to properly draw correctly the structure of the ester formed in these sorts of reactions. In a second, I'll explain exactly how to name the ester we formed here. To name the ester, you look at the piece that came originally from the alcohol and think about how many carbons is in that section of the molecule. In this case, it's one carbon, so the prefix is meth. And rather than finishing with the alcohol name, which would be methanol, you cut away the A-N-O-L and replace it with Y-L, as if it's a branch of an alkyl chain, for example, and that gives the first part of the name of the ester, which has been derived from what was originally the alcohol. The second part of the name of the ester is derived from the part of the ester which came from the carboxylic acid. And again, we slightly tweak the name of the component. So whilst the original reactant was called ethanoic acid, this section of the ester, we remove the oic acid section and replace it with the carboxylate salt name O8. So this is ethan, which again is meaning two carbons in our nomenclature knowledge, and then the O8 is telling us that it's got a similar name to carboxylate salts. So the full name of this ester is methyl ethanoate. Methyl being derived from the original alcohol and ethanoate being derived from the original carboxylic acid coming together to produce our full ester name. Below the displayed formulae equation, I've then written a word equation, ethanoic acid plus methanol forming methyl ethanoate, the full name of our ester written correctly, and water. And then below that, I've written a structural formula equation. The structural formula for ethanoic acid, CH3COOH, the structural formula for methanol, CH3OH, written the right way around this time. The structural formula for the ester, CH3CO in red because it came from the carboxylic acid, OCH3 in blue because it came from the alcohol, and that's our methyl ethanoate molecule drawn as a structural formula, and then plus H2O, our water. So there you can see, guys, a really nice example of how to represent an esterification reaction with displayed formulae as a word equation and with structural formulae. The question you might be asked could be any of these possible um, situations, but here you are well armed to deal with any problem they could possibly ask you. I did say that esters have really pleasant fragrances, one of their main uh, features, but actually when you make methyl ethanoate, when my students make methyl ethanoate and they waft this over their nose and get a smell of this fragrance, uh, it's not the most pleasant of uh, esters we can produce. This one has a really solventy smell and the best description of it is it smells a bit like uh, a glue. So not one of the best ones to illustrate the point that they smell uh, really fragrant and, and, and they're nice fragrances. But I will go through a second example in a second to illustrate that some of these do have nice smells rather than a bit, you know, stringent like, like, like glue, for example. Just before I come on to my second example, I just want to take this time out to say, if you're finding this video useful, helpful in building an understanding of esters, please do think about giving it a like and maybe thinking about subscribing to the channel or even ringing the bell to keep notified of our latest content trying to build a library of useful chemistry tutorials and lessons and revision videos for the YouTube community. So your support is always massively appreciated and really helps me to keep striving on. So thank you very much in advance. Back to the video. This second example is also a really interesting illustration of how we can prove experimentally 
It's the oxygen in the OH group of the carboxylic acid, which is lost in the formation of the water, and not the OH group from the alcohol. We do this by using a radioactive isotope of oxygen in the alcohol, that's oxygen 18, which will decay in a predictable manner and produce a radioactive source or radioactive um, emissions that can be tracked and therefore be followed throughout the reaction. So when we undertake this reaction and we react methanoic acid, for example, with ethanol of our radioactive isotope present, we find that when we look for that radioactivity in the products, that radioactivity is found in the ester and not found in the water, meaning that it was the OH group in the methanoic acid which was lost and the hydrogen from the alcohol and not the OH group from the alcohol because otherwise that radioactive isotope would not be found in the ester. So this ethyl methanoate was formed with the alcohol's oxygen still present producing that radioactive emission, which is trackable. I did say I'd talk about the more pleasant fragrances, and it turns out that ethyl methanoate has a much nicer smell than our previous example. It smells a bit like rum. So, do your best Jack Sparrow impression. Where's the rum gone? I'd like to finish with some mass practice. So all I've made here is a table with three alcohols, and three carboxylic acids, that's methanol, ethanol, and propanol, and methanoic acid, ethanoic acid, and propanoic acid, so I can build lots and lots of esters very quickly. We can really get used to practicing the structures and naming of these esters. So if I were to react methanol with methanoic acid, I'd lose the OH from the methanoic acid, the hydrogen from methanol joined together, I form this ester here. Hopefully the colors can help you track each structure. I'm just going to run through these really quickly. So combine these two alcohol and carboxylic acid together, you'll form methyl methanoate. Ethanol and methanoic acid, you'd form ethyl methanoate. And if I did propanol and methanoic acid, I'd form propyl methanoate. If I reacted methanol with ethanoic acid, I'd form methyl ethanoate. Ethanol with ethanoic acid would be ethyl ethanoate, and propanol with ethanoic acid would be propyl ethanoate. And finally, if I reacted propanoic acid with methanol, I'd form methyl propanoate. Ethanol with propanoic acid would be ethyl propanoate, and finally, propanol with propanoic acid would be propyl propanoate. So fingers crossed that quick final summary will help you to build confidence in drawing the structures of esters and naming esters. Thank you so much for your attention and I'll see you in the next video. See you later.